Hi, my name is Sachi. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I want to show you how I DIY this fedora style hat from scratch using thrifted fabric and my head measurement. The hat has three parts, crown top, crown side, and brim. It's lined with cotton flannel and finished with sizing ribbon. And the crown side is seamed in the back. Let's get started. To take your measurement accurately, you need a flex ruler, a measuring tape, and a ruler. I filmed these clips when I wasn't sure if I wanted to show my face to the internet, so please excuse my mask face. Measure your head circumference using the tape measure. You want to make sure you measure the biggest part of your head and add half to a full inch to the measurement in order to accommodate the thickness of the fabric. Now take the flex ruler and find the zero point. Place the zero point to the center of your forehead and mold the flex ruler to your head shape. Then take off the flex ruler from your head, carefully preserving the exact shape, and put it aside. Draw a straight line on the poster board or any paper you want to make your head patterns out of. Place the zero point of the flex ruler on the line. Divide the head circumference measurement into two and find the number on the ruler and place the point on the line at the bottom. Hold down the flex ruler and trace the shape outside of the ruler. Cut around the lines, leaving enough space to cut out a full oval shape. Fold the paper on the straight line and trace the shape on the other side to make a full oval shape. This is the base shape for your hat in any style. To draft the crown top pattern, trace the base pattern on your pattern paper. Don't forget to mark the center front and the center back for reference. Connect the marks with straight line. Measure in about 7 8 of an inch from both the top and the bottom, and draw a shape that looks like an avocado. Cut along the shape then fold on the straight line. Trace the shape on the other side to complete the avocado shape. Now you have the pattern for the crown top. Actually, I forgot to add the seam allowance to the crown top pattern, so I trace around the pattern with no seam allowance, then added a quarter inch seam allowance all around. I used my pattern notcher to clearly mark the center line on all the patterns I've drafted so far. Now you need to decide how wide you want your brim to be. I tried to picture the hat I want, how much I want the brim to extend out. If you have a hat you already love, you can simply measure the hat to determine the width of the brim. To draft the brim pattern, first you trace around your base pattern. Don't forget to transfer the center line. Add half inch for the seam allowance to the measurement of the brim, then mark the amount from the baseline to one side of the oval. For example, if you want the finished brim to be 3 inches wide, mark 3.5 inches from the baseline. And then, using the same technique shown before, cut out the complete pattern. Add 
add half inch seam allowance to the inside of the baseline. Drafting the crown side pattern might seem a bit tricky, but if you follow along, it's made up with simple steps. First, you draw a straight line near the bottom of your pattern paper. This line should be half of your head circumference, plus 3 quarters of an inch. My head circumference with ease is 23 inches, so 23 divided by 2 is 11 and a half, plus 3 quarters equals 12 and a quarter. Square up 5 inches on the both ends of the first line. Connect the tops of those lines. Left side will be the center front and the right side will be the center back of the crown. Because I want the center front to be slightly more tilted, then the center back, I measure in one and a quarter on the left and one inch on the right. At the bottom of each side, measure up seven eighths of an inch. Now you draw center back and center front lines by connecting these markings. Find the center of the bottom line and the center of the top line. And at the center of the top line, measure up quarter inch. Square off the ends of the center front line and the center back line. Draw curved lines to connect all the reference points. These dimensions include seam allowances. The center line is on fold, a quarter inch seam allowance to the top, and half inch seam allowances to the center back and the bottom. That was it for the pattern drafting. Now for the cutting. First, I cut out the interfacing. I use this fusible interfacing, but you should choose the interfacing that will best suit your fabric. I cut slightly bigger than the patterns because this is a rough cut. I will cut more accurately after I fuse the interfacing to the fabric. This is my fabric for the hat. I thrifted this full suede, which was in pretty good condition. You can use any medium to heavy weight fabric to make this hat. Wool is probably the easiest to handle because wool fabric can be stretched and shaped more easily than other types of fabric. I pinned the interfacing to the fabric wrong sides together. You cut the fabric slightly bigger than the interfacing pieces. 
This is where I realized I made a mistake of cutting the side piece not on fold. So make sure you cut the side piece on fold. After fusing the interface into the fabric, you want to cut the pieces as accurate as possible. So I traced around the patterns with pencil and cut the pieces by following these lines carefully. For the crown side piece, I traced one side and marked the center line and flipped the pattern and traced the other side. I used a small rotary cutter to cut out the inside of the brims, but you can use scissors for this too.
The lining is optional, but I decided to add a lining with cotton flannel for warmth and so that the hat stays better on my head. Cut out one crown side on fold and one crown top. To make the lining slightly smaller, I used 5 8 seam allowance instead of half inch seam allowance. Looking at the end result, I think I could have used 3 quarters seam allowance.
I am very happy with how it turned out. If I'm super picky, the base shape of the hat could have been a bit rounder in the front and it would have fit nicer on my head. I ended up stitching down the sides of my bone all around inside to the lining so it would not flop out when I'm wearing the hat. Shaping of the grogan ribbon just sprang back to its original shape and it's not conformed to the hat shape very well anymore, so I would really try to find Peter Sham ribbon in the future for a nicer finish. That is it for this video. If you like sewing videos like this, please like this video and subscribe to my channel for more contents like this. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.